some people, when we talk about gratitude, say, hey, what have I got to be grateful about? Well, let me inform you about the alphabet of good things to be grateful about. A for Australia. I explained to my American friends that obviously the best country in the world is Australia and the best part of Australia is Queensland. I'm sorry, Trevor. And, and, <laughs> the, best, and the best part of Queensland is southern Queensland and the best part of southern Queensland is Caloundra and the best part of Caloundra is by the sea. Now, of course, I'm free from all bias, but Australia, <laughs> right? Australia. That's something to be grateful for. B, beauty. Aren't you glad everything's not ugly? Books. Where would we be without books? Brotherhood, birds, brooks, bonfires, Bible. These are all things to be grateful for. The alphabet of thanksgiving. C, children. Depends how many you've got. <laughs> children, churches, camps. And if you're Americans, cranberries. D, democracy, dawn. That's the best part of the day and most people miss it. They prefer the darkness. Dawn, duties, well, that's a mixed blessing. E, eyes. However bad things are, if you can see, thank God. One day coming home from a church committee, I was pastoring a little church and I felt weighed down with all the problems that the dear souls had brought up. <coughs> I was just entering the gate and I thought, well, which one of your faculties would you give up to have all these problems solved? And that solved all my problems. <laughs> eyes. Education, faith, F, faith, friends. Where would you be without friends? Fun, you need a bit of fun, healthy fun. Flowers, freedom. G, God. H, hope. Death of hope leads to hope for death. Happiness, home. I, ideals. Independence. Immortality. J is only one word that fits that. Jesus. K, knowledge. Keepsakes. L, love. What would life be without love? A life without love is a death, a living death. Loyalties, longings, laughter. Ever thought what life would be like if no one could smile? You imagine. You go to work, everybody's grim. You come home, everybody's growling. You go and look for your friends next door and they're down. Nobody smiles. It'd be very difficult. Laughter and love. Oh, no, what have we left out? M for mother. Music. There we are, something for you, Duncan and Caroline. N, nights, nature. O for oceans, opportunities. P for prayer, for patience, pictures. P, peace, there's something. Q, quiet. R, right, reasons, rest. S, strength, ships, sunsets. T, trust, tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. That's how they ended up, I think, uh, gone with the wind. Because when life seems terrible, have a sleep. Next day it looks different. Tomorrow. Thanksgiving. U for universe. Good job, it's there or we wouldn't be. Unity. V for victory. W for worship. Worship tells us what's of worth, what's of value. Worthship. Work. Might be very dull if we had nothing to do. X. Xerography. Xeroxing. Y. Youth. It's gone. Y. Years. Y. Yesterdays. Now, here, get this one. Z. Ah, this will test you out. Zoos, zest and zippers. <laughs> There's always something to be grateful for. Have you ever thought what the world would be like if every reference to Christ was wiped out of books, newspapers, papers and memories? Just suppose that Christ disappeared entirely. With him would go the Bible. With him would go the Ten Commandments. What then? I'll tell you what then. The nights would be filled with shrieks and the days with tears. You know what happens in the big cities of the world whenever there's a, a blackout. Shops are all robbed. Convenient murders take place. Stealing on a lavish scale. 
Well, you take away the Bible, you take away the Decalogue, you take away Judgment Day, you take away Christ and Calvary, that's what life would be like night after night after night, filled with screams and the days with tears. So give thanks for Christ, for his life and his death and his resurrection. But for him, we would have no security and no hope. Life would not be worth living. Years ago, three young men were walking along by the River Seine and it was Good Friday, everybody was going to do church. And these three men were sceptics, they didn't believe in that rubbish. And they talked about the idiocy of people going to church, all these people going in to make confession. And two of them turned to their leader and they said, why don't you go in, join the queue, go into the confessional and tell the priest what we've been saying. Well, he didn't want to lose face. He said, okay, I'll do it. So he went into a big cathedral, joined the queue, came to the confessional. The priest said, well, son, he said, father, I've come to tell you that all this religion is bosh. This superstition is ridiculous. Oh, my son, why did you decide to tell me? And he told him about being challenged by his mates. Oh, I understand, said the priest. Now will I give you a challenge? Will you accept my challenge? I want you to go to the chancel where there's a representation of Christ on the cross. And I want you to stand before it and say, Jesus died for me, but I don't give a damn. The young man gulped, but he said, all right, I'll do it. He went down to the chancel where there's this big statue of the crucified Christ. He said, Jesus died for me, but I don't give a damn. And he came back to the priest and he said, I'll go now. Not yet, son. You're not afraid, it's nothing to you. Go and do it a second time. Go and stand there and say, Jesus died for me. I don't give a damn. He went down. Jesus died for me. But I don't give a damn. Came back to the priest said, Father, I'll leave now. No, my son, just once more. You know it means nothing to you. Once more and you can go. So he goes the third time. Statue of the crucified Christ. This time his words are slower. Jesus died for me and I don't give a damn. Came back to the priest and he said, Father, may I make my confession now? <laughs> now the man who was telling this story, a bishop in church, then lowered his voice to whisper and he said, and dear young people, that young man was me. That young man was me.